Greetings, loyal Anthronians and fans of the Armada Faction. My name is Gary, also known as Kane, also known as Captain Anthros, and I bid you welcome back to the Star Squadron server. Today, we're here to discuss the future. So roll the intro. Okay, so this is going to be more of a simple episode. We're not going to be piling on the special effects and the sound effects this time. So it's going to be me and you having a bit of a one-sided conversation because I can't hear you back. But I can read your comments, I suppose. So yeah, let's call it a conversation. That's my serious face. Serious face. We're having a conversation. Right. I'll cut straight to the meat of what we're talking about here. And first up, I know in the second to last episode, I made two sort of big announcements, one being that I was back in production of Starman Adventures, and almost the more important announcement that I wasn't going to update the Magellan class up to sort of current standards because it was too small and blah 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 blah. Uh, I went back on that because uh, I'm a bad person. <laughs> I love my Magellan class. It was probably the first real ship I ever built that wasn't just like a little fighter or something. And I've revamped it time and time and time again. I mean, including the, the fighter variant, the one with the with the fighter breaks off the front of it, the one I used for Star Wars Adventures, um, you know, it's not even the most efficient ship. The fact that it breaks apart actually lowers its overall ability to have big firepower and everything. It's really, I just, it's just more of a gimmick. But I updated it anyway. I updated all three, uh, so I did a shield rebalance on them all. Uh, tweaked the weapons like I did with everything else, so it's more, you know, ion rockets and so forth rather than cannons, so they can't shoot their own missiles down. Uh, we'll go over a look at them in a bit, but uh, from back on that, I'm now using the Magellans as a defense slash mining fleet, uh, neither of which you can do until fleets are fixed. Uh, I hate putting them in defense because there's always a chance they'll see a pirate and chase it over a border and fall to pieces. And obviously you can't, most people have the same problem as me where they won't mine, or if they do, they won't do it very well. But I'm having the problem where you tell them to mine and they just sit still and stay out asteroids. But eventually, my hope is to have the destroyers as sort of the flagship of each little mining fleet with the rest of them being the mining Magellans. You know, and they'll go do the mining while they defend everything else, And but that'll all be after some updates. The bigger news is I got a new job, which is fantastic. Uh, I know you've probably heard me whine about money before in some previous videos, which I didn't really like doing, but those are the breaks. But fantastically, I have a new job, and that's great. Uh, what that means in real terms, though, is I have to go back on the promise that Stormade Adventures was going back into regular production. Um, I talked before how I'd finally done the rewrite to get around some of the problems I'd have, not having access to certain people and props and so forth. To get to the end of the season and that that has all been written had actually started filming some of it but then with the new job obviously it leaves me a lot less time to do it and i think i've complained about a million times about how long those episodes actually take me to make so it's not done i'm not, I'm not giving up on it in any way the season will get finished there will be another season hopefully as well um i'm just had to go back to the previous thing when they're going to come out as and when they're done and i really can't say when that will be um i'm not a huge youtuber i don't really make my living off of this or anything <laughs> anything even close to that. In fact, uh, I want to get a bit behind the scenes a bit. I've never actually earned a penny as of yet because I've never earned enough from advertising to reach the threshold to ever get paid at all. Um, without going into too much detail. So this is really more of a hobby and obviously I can't jeopardize my work over that. But the season will continue. The show will continue. Uh, but more importantly, um, I suppose any of that, the show here on the Star Squadron server, that's fine. That's still coming out at least once a week, every week. That's still going to be a thing. We're going to continue on here. So the channel's not done. The show's not done. Yada, yada, yada. I'm sort of rambling on, but just it needed to be said. I'm going to start wandering around a little so you don't stare at me in my seat too long. Um, yeah, having said all that, <laughs> server's been pretty dead recently. Uh, the game is has been suffering quite a bit recently from... There's been a quick patch cycle, uh, they were trying to get the stuff out every two weeks, which while noble um, basically meant that bugs were just getting left longer and longer without being fixed. And it's gotten to the stage where for a lot of us, including me, I've had several rage quits, I think I've talked about them before, that is Dog and Missy's ship. Hmm, must have been here. Um, it's pretty much in an unplayable state. Fleets can't be used, but the NPC factions of huge doom fleets while they fall apart too you know if you annoy them or anything happens you know you need a fleet to sign up to a fleet and 
you know, risking all your ships when you know they're just going to fall to pieces. And I mean, a lot of my own designs in particular are pretty reliant on the turret loadouts and stuff. Um, I've seen that in other bugs. Think like, there's been entity vanishing, blueprints from me have been a bit dodgy. Um, really struggling to get things into shipyards, although I did get there eventually, but only after a couple of rage quits. Yada yada yada. Um, but so yeah, basically, I think a lot of people. Oh, hell, was already here. I've been taking a pretty much a bit of a break from the game. I mean, I've even scaled down what I'm doing. I filmed that uh, cool episode with all the sound effects and stuff, but you know, in reality, that wasn't a lot of gameplay so much as. <clears throat> acting in, in quotes there and adding effects in and stuff um, so like the war has been a bit uh, stale on that end so we're still on cursor which is good but with people taking a break uh, one of the unexpected things was we actually lost a lot of territory because of the faction point system because people weren't really online um, got that fixed but from what I can see yeah so that's cursor there this is where outpost two is. That's outpost, well, the first one, outpost zero, outpost one, I think is yes, and that's the home base. So I've reclaimed both of my outposts, all three of my outposts, sorry. The home base is obviously still fine. Went and reclaimed Curso, but we actually lost all that space. Um, I'm not sure what's been going on, obviously, over on the squadron side there. Well, they're the ones in red, obviously, because they're evil. <laughs> Wait, why am I cackling? Anyway, um, so that's that, that wasn't much fun. Um, so this is really more of an update style video, but what we'll do is give a quick look at the Magellans anyway. So we'll jump over to one of those. Oh, it would really help if I had. There we go. So we've got three of them now. We've got the Magellan class destroyer, which are called the Cumbernauld, and then the two miners, the Dundonald and the Symington. Sticking with my really, really creative naming scheme of naming them after towns in Scotland because then I don't have to think about it. <laughs> cool, so they're not vastly different looking from how they looked before, they're just mainly the weapons updates, but added a couple of details in with the display, so that's real-time readout for shields and armor, structure and power and so forth, um, real-time navigation stats and whether the jamming's on basically. Let's jump in here, oh, we're already in build mode, gravy. Right, that's well they were in formation they must have saw something oh well uh yeah so again basically just did the shield rebalance so now they've got less shields overall i think i dropped down to about one just under 170 but up the regen to about fifteen thousand. that's similar but slightly less on the miners obviously they don't have as much hull to fill with shields and uh, yeah so I took out the cannon and replaced it with ion rockets so we got the 55 Missile 55 cannon and then 28 because it was as close as I get to 50% ion effect. Um, then you got your your twin lock ons and your nukes. So again, not vastly different, but it's been brought up to date. Um, tested them in groups against some of the larger ships and they actually do quite well now. Um, sort of it comes off more like a bombing thing because they can keep the shields down and then hit with the big the big hits. So that's quite good. And then there's the miners, which is, again the weapons haven't really changed. They didn't have all I really did was put rocket turrets on rather than the cannon turrets. Everything else is pretty much identical by the shield rebounds. But there we go. So Magellan's, as I was saying, they're now going to be more of a sort of a mining slash defense fleet. Whereas the big ships over at Curso are more sort of the active fleet. So, wrong button. That's what they're the hunter packs. So that's where you get your cruisers and the big ion frigates. And then these are sort of, I'm calling it defense fleet, but it'll also be sent mining. At some point, um, did a little bit of a cosmetic upgrade on the Archelons as well. Now I've not applied that to the ones in the field, as it really is just a cosmetic upgrade. But I applied it to my own carrier back at the home base. So factory, quickly get ourselves over there and give you a quick look at that. Really, just just to really show you. Essentially, um, if you're ever going to download them from the dock or anything, it's obviously the most up-to-date version. Um, so I'll see you there. Grab the gravity. Cool. Uh, so, there we go. So basically I added in an extra display on each side. So now we've got here sort of the engineering station. Got your power, armor, shields, and structure. So 
you know, in my role play, the dude will be here and going heaps sort of between working from here and actually going down to engineering something actually needs to be fixed. Here's a sort of navigation dude. He's in charge of the jamming, the speed, and where we are. Um, I've not just written the name above there. I've actually got the name tag, which I've done with all my ships now. So if you were to download the ship and give it its own name, that'll appear there. Yeah, I learned how to use display blocks. Woohoo. Um, quickly jump in. So I had released this on the dock as the Mark VI with the weapon changes and the changes to the Gladiums. Um, but I hadn't done the little cosmetic upgrade there. So this is the one that's live now, but it's the 6S because like cars for some reason usually chuck an S at the end of something or like a graphics card or something if it's not quite the next series <laughs> whatever. Um, but for those who didn't catch much of an update what the 6 is, it's basically... This one does have cannons because the carrier that we have decided anyway should only be used by the player, not the AI. So this weapon loaded out to the suit me or someone else flying the ship. But the Gladiums have had their cannons removed and replaced with a ion rocket. So they actually are really effective as being bombers now rather than fighters. Which is great because the way AI works, none of them are very good at being fighters anyway. They would just fly slowly in circles. Shooting at each other casually, which isn't exactly doing strafing runs and stuff, but now, uh, especially in groups like the four of them, uh, spamming the ion rocket, spamming the ion rocket, sorry, at uh, larger ships actually really did quite a good job of keeping the shields down, and then they would obviously fire the lock-on missiles to make big holes in them. So it would take a while to take out a larger ship, but they now function quite efficiently as bombers, which actually makes sense for an offensive carrier. So I'm quite proud of that. But that's really all I've been up to, just little tweaks and upgrades of the ships. Uh, just really get, to get everything up to scratch and up to ready so it's obviously been almost handy having a bit of a lull here just to get everything ready and get all my fleets in place because uh, I'm sure once the patch comes out which hopefully will be soon that fixes a lot of the problems with the game we'll be sitting pretty and uh, it will be all go again <laughs> okay that's all the time I have for this episode I know it's just been a little bit more of an update but we'll be back in full swing I assume next week but even then, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave it a like, share it, all that good stuff. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And I will see you all, hopefully, in a more action-packed episode next week. But until then, I've been Captain Anthros, and you're dismissed.